Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Sew Custom. Today's video, as you will have already seen from the thumbnail, is how I sewed up this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is a viscose, super lightweight, really flowy, good for a project like this. And on to the cutting out. This is my front. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. For those of you interested in patterning, I shall leave linked in the description box my previous cami drafting video. So that's that all cut out. So the first thing to do here is to add my straps. And for my strap, I have two layers of fabric underneath this pattern piece. And I have a little bit of prep work to do here before I can add these to my bodice. So first of all, I need to press my seam allowance on one side. So just folding underneath one centimeter, pressing into place. And then folding again, this time by the width of the strap, one inch and pressing into place. So that completes the prep work I need here. Now to add this to the bodice. So just lining it up here with the bodice right sides together, pinning and to the machine now to tack into place. So stitching here about a millimetre or so within my seam allowance using a little bit of a longer stitch length. As I say, just tacking this into place for now. So that's how to press. And now that that's done, I'm ready for the flounce that will go over my arm. So again, I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. And just like the cami before, I have a video on how I create a flounce pattern. I shall leave that also in the description box below. So I have a little bit of prep work to do here. So the first thing to do is to take care of the hem and for this little top I've decided on a double folded hem. So I'm just folding that raw edge in underneath by about half of my hem allowance, pressing into place, folding again by the same amount and pressing into place. And I finish that off camera and this is how it looks. So now to stitch right along that inner crease edge, starting with a back stitch, taking this nice and gently, using a little bit of a longer stitch length, trying to hug that inner crease edge the whole way around, and finishing with a back stitch. And once it's had a good press, this is how it looks. So happy with that. So now that that's done, I'm ready to take care of that raw edge on that inner circle. And for that I've chosen a bias finish. So I've cut myself a strip of bias and I'm just lining it up with one edge and pinning into place. Ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance. Just like before, taking this nice and gently making sure my edges are lined up the whole way around. And finishing with a back stitch. So I just need to trim down that seam. So I'm taking off here probably about two thirds of that seam allowance. I finish that off camera. So now to press, so I'm pressing the bias away from the flounce but making sure that that trim seam allowance in underneath is butted up against the bias. And once complete, this is how it looks. And now that that's done, I'm ready to understitch. So I'm stitching through the bias, through that trim seam allowance in underneath. And I'm about a millimetre or so away from the flounce itself here. Using that same longer stitch length, starting and finishing with a back stitch. So to complete the bias, I just need to give that a bit of a press. So 
So just folding that raw edge in underneath, pressing, folding again and pressing, making sure I can see that line of understitching on the inside. So that's that done. So just like before, taking to the machine now to stitch along that inner crease edge. Taking this nice and gently, using the same longer stitch length I have been using. Starting and finishing with the back stitch. So once that's had a good press, this is how it looks. So that completes the prep work for this flounce. So now this is ready to be added to my bodice. So I'm laying it wrong side of flounce to right side of bodice, lining it up with the neckline and pinning into place. Ready to stitch. Back stitching to start, sewing about a millimetre or so within my seam allowance here, and back stitching to finish. And now that that's done, I'm ready to add this whole piece to my back. So I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. So that's that all cut out. And here I'm just laying one side over the top of my strap. My fabric is right sides together, lining up my edges and pinning. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing here as I did when I put the strap on the front. So tack into place just within my seam allowance using that same longer stitch length, starting and finishing with a back stitch. So I've given that a press and this is how it looks. Happy with that. So now that that's done, I'm ready to join my flounce. So lining it up with the back neckline, wrong side of flounce to right side of bodice, pinning into place and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So now that my arm flounce is joined to front and back and my strap is in place, I'm ready for my neck and shoulder flounce. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. So that's that all cut out. So now before I can add this to my bodice, I just need to take care of the hem. And I'm going to use the same finish here as I did on my arm flounce. So off camera, I've just double folded the hem and pressed it into place. And here, just stitching like I did before along that inner crease edge. Starting and finishing with a back stitch. So I've given that a bit of a press and this is the result. Happy with that. So now this piece is ready to be joined to my neckline, front and back. So laying it wrong side of flounce to right side of bodice, lining it up with the centre front, lining it up with the strap and lining it up with the centre back. Pinning into place and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start, stitching at my 1cm seam allowance little pivot from the centre front of the front neckline, over the top of the strap, down the back neckline, little pivot and finishing with a back stitch at the bottom of the flounce on the centre back. So that's my neck and shoulder flounce all attached. So now I need to take care of that raw edge in underneath the strap. So to do that, I'm just going to cut at a diagonal from the edge of the fabric right up to the stitch at the edge of the strap. That will just release that fabric and allow me to tuck it in underneath. So folding that seam allowance at the stitch line, as I say, tucking it into the strap and pressing into place. I'll 
finish that off camera and pin it into place. And now that that's done, I'm ready to stitch down my strap. Back stitching to start, making sure my flounce is out of the way. Stitching right along that crease edge using that same longer stitch length and finishing with a back stitch. So I've given that a bit of a press. So you can see here that my flounce edges around the strap are all nicely top stitched down, tucked in underneath nice and neat and tidy. So now that that's done, I'm ready to close up my centre front and centre back seam. So off camera, I've repeated this whole process again, which you can see here. And now just laying one side over the other. My fabric is wrong sides together. Lining up my edges and pinning into place. And my fabric is wrong sides together here because I'm fringe seaming. So to the machine, stitching here at about half of my seam allowance. Back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So that's the first line of stitching for my French seam complete. And of course I do exactly the same on the centre back seam, which you can see here. So I just need to trim down that seam allowance and press. So just like before, I'm taking away here probably about two thirds of that allowance. Pressing that remaining seam towards one side and here just folding one side over the other, making sure my seam line is right on the edge. Pressing into place and pinning. Ready to stitch for the second time. Back stitching to start. Again, at about half of my seam allowance and finishing with a back stitch. So this finish just makes sure that everything is nicely tucked away on the inside. And of course I've done exactly the same on the back. They've had a good press and this is the result. So now that that's done, I'm ready to close up my hem. And just like the flounces before, off camera I've double folded and pressed and ready to stitch here right along that inner crease edge. Back stitching to start, taking this nice and easy, using that same longer stitch length as I have been using, and finishing with a back stitch. So I've given those a bit of a press, and this is the result. Happy with that. So now that that's done, I'm ready to close up my neckline and armholes. And for this top, I've decided on a facing for that. So my fabric underneath is on the fold. The fabric I'm using here is a viscose foil. Nice and lightweight, nice and drapey. I have a little notch at the neck on the fold line of both pieces. So the first thing to do on both pieces is to finish that raw edge at the bottom. And following the same theme as before, I've chosen a double folded hem here. So I've prepped that off camera, which you can see here, and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start. Sewing right along that inner crease edge. And back stitching to finish. Of course I've done exactly the same to the back, I've given them both a press and this is the result. And now that that's done, I'm ready to add these to my bodice. So I'm starting here with the back, so just moving my front out of the way, exposing the neckline and armhole right side up. And to make sure I don't sew any of those flounces, I'm just going to roll them up and pin them out of the way. And 
here just laying my facing over the top, lining up my edges, lining up my notches and pinning into place and ready to stitch. So starting at the underarm on one side, back stitching, following that underarm curve the whole way up to the strap, little pivot there, over the top of the strap, down the back neckline, little pivot at the centre back and repeating on the other side. Finishing with a back stitch. So that's my back facing all attached. And off camera, I've just ran those edges through the overlocker, snipped out that fabric at the corner, snipped into that centre back. And all I have to do now is pull my straps out, give the whole thing a good press which you can see I've went ahead and done here. And now to make sure that my facing stays nicely tucked away in underneath, I'm going to understitch. So I've pressed that seam towards the facing and I'm running a stitch line about a millimetre or two away from the outer fabric, through the facing, through the seam allowance in underneath, using that same longer stitch length, starting at the underarm and stitching as far up that underarm curve as I can back stitching, moving my fabric along to the other side of the strap, stitching as far around that V as I can get, back stitching, moving my fabric along to the other side of the strap and repeating for the second underarm. Finishing with a back stitch. So that's my facing on the back all nicely understitched. It's had a bit of a press and this is how it looks. So super happy with this. And off camera, I'll repeat that whole process again for the front, which you can see here. So all of my raw edges are nicely tucked away in underneath. My strap is finished at both sides. So now that that's done, I'm ready to close up my side seams. So pulling my facing up away from the bodice, laying the back over the front and just like the seams before I'm French seaming so my fabric is wrong sides together lining up my edges from the facing down to the hem pinning and stitching here at about half of my seam allowance back stitching to start and back stitching to finish so that's my first line of stitches sewn and off camera I've trimmed down that seam, pressed and pinned and here just stitching for the second time. All in exactly the same way as I did before. So that just needs a bit of a press, which you can see I've went ahead and done here. Nice and neat and tidy. And with that, this little top is complete. So I have that lovely flounce around the neck and up over the shoulders. My straps all in place, everything tucked away. My arm flounce with that bias finish. My facing closing up the armhole. And on the inside, those gorgeous French seams. Double folded hems. And this is what it looks like on. So I'm super happy with how this has turned out. I love those gorgeous delicate flounces up over the shoulder and at the top of the arm. I like the V-neck, but it's not too low. The fit is so nice, super comfortable. And I like this one so much, I've made a dress version. Those of you following along on Instagram may have already seen it. If not, I shall post a few pics there soon. Anyway, I love how this has turned out. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. 
If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you guys on Friday. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, folks. <laughs>